President Biden has signed more than 30 executive orders since taking office. And some of those are also aimed at racial equality from federal housing laws, criminal justice reform, condemning xenophobia, and better communicating with Native American tribes. I spoke with the chair of the political science department at Howard University, Dr. Robbie Perry, about what these executive orders will accomplish and what happens next. What's significant here, uh, to be really clear, is that no president has ever uh, put forth an equity agenda at all. That's the first thing uh, for uh, federal government. And then secondly, um, th this agenda uh, is what they've been phrasing it as uh, is embedded throughout the quote whole of government, which is very significant. Usually what politicians do is they'll throw up a committee, they'll give you a chair and you know, they'll give them a little bit of power to you know, make recommendations and that's about it. Uh, maybe a little bit of money if you're lucky. Uh, what we got in this case is that every single layer of the government has been directed by the president in these series of executive orders. So you have these executive actions and within, let's say, four years from now, you have a different administration come in um, that probably isn't in line with what the Biden-Harris administration is trying to do right now. And they can undo these uh, executive actions. So, so what needs to happen to solidify this? All of this is a complete uh, shift from the Trump administration. And so it's it, it's encouraging, um, but it's got to be followed up by policy. Otherwise, as you said at the outset, in four years, all of this could be simply wiped away. Just as easy, arguably, as it is for Biden to sign these executive orders, it'll be just as easy for the next president to unsign them. So what can people do in that same realm? I mean, you can't just leave this up to the government. No, no, no. So ultimately, here's the great lesson, right, is that that when people participate in politics, uh, when we have the, some of the highest turnouts, as we saw in the last election and the Georgia runoffs, as an example, and here in D.C. Uh, during the November elections as well, uh, some of the highest turnouts that we've seen in many, many years, uh, that has to continue. Uh, we, we have to remember as citizens that ultimately we live in a republic. And so all these people we see on, on the news uh, that are allegedly representing our interests are there because we voted them in. Um, and uh, that means that we actually have the power to ensure that the government reflects what we want it to be. But it will never do so if we are not engaged in the process really in between elections. 